to use the CAPN for require return estimation, the very good critical part is the, how do we estimate beta coefficient. The beta estimation basically uh, follow uh, using the uh, statistical uh, approach based on the regression model. So usually what we do is using historical return data and calculate uh, the unadjust raw beta coefficient. The beta coefficient uh, by itself, the formula is the covariance over variance. The numerator is a covariance of return for the individual asset with respect to the market return. So it's covariance between the individual stock return and the market return divided by the denominator is the market return uh, variance, the variance of the market return. So uh, everybody read to just memorize it. The beta is the covariance over variance. Now we know that the variance has to be positive. The covariance could be positive, could be negative. So when we do the regression model, uh, be careful, the beta could be maybe negative. So if you see the negative beta, then uh, it caused some problem, then we need to do a lot of adjustment because the beta coefficient according to the CAPM model, it cannot be negative, has to be positive. Otherwise, you cannot estimate appropriate risk premium. So, using the historical data to estimate the raw beta and which is unadjust. The estimate of beta result from the ordinary least square regression model of return on the stocks and on the return on the market index. So it's a regression um, of two return as back individual assets return information uh, as well as with respect to the market index return. All right. So so be careful is the raw data is just uh, it is unadjusted. So there's some statistical problem, right? The, the, the simple estimate from historical data, it will be influenced by the choice of index used to uh, represent the market portfolio. So what benchmark you are, you, you are using. All right, so sometimes uh, don't overlook that. Most people could use S&P 500 index, but somebody will argue that what about the stock is related to smaller stocks. Right? The S&P 500 usually is a large cap. What about small cap? And what about international stocks? So to choose the appropriate benchmark for calculating beta, it's very important and is subject to different type of the firm and needs to be careful to do this kind of adjustment. And the other one is the, the length of the data period. Are we using uh, the monthly return for 20 years? Or are we using weekly return for five years? And it, it really depends, all right? Because if uh, any time, I can guarantee you, if you're using different length of periods and using different uh, period, holding period return, say for example weekly versus monthly or daily versus uh, weekly you get get different beta all right the beta will change so what is the most uh, appropriate time period that we can estimate more robust beta that is a question all right and this do a lot of research and an other a lot of argument and adjustment Another major problem there for beta coefficient is that because it's a simple estimate. Empirically, we have found that the beta, the simple estimate beta value, actually, if you look at that over the time, 
All right. If you look at the over the time, if you look uh, the monthly return crowds, say ten years, and every um, every say five period time, five years, and you estimate a beta and then rolling over, and you see the beta estimate has this called a mean reverting process. It's going to really gradually converge to the mean value of 1.0. So there's a tendency that the beta coefficient, regardless, is the uh, large firm or smaller firm. But if, if you look at long period time, the beta over the time is converged to the mean value of 1.0. So that means that we need to do some kind of adjustment for the, this kind of mean reverting process or a convergence process of the beta coefficient. Therefore, in practice, we usually adjust, uh, suggest that we need to adjust the data, a beta coefficient by using this weighty average. Two thirds of the weight we use for our unadjusted estimation from the regression model. And plus one third of 1.0, so one third times 1.0. So this is the weight sum value, two third of the unadjusted beta and one third of one. Then we can get this adjust beta. This has been uh, used widely uh, in the financial uh, industry to estimate the beta coefficient, especially for the public company. Next. We're going to ask the question is that, yeah, we know how to estimate the beta coefficient uh, for the public company. What about for the non-public firm? Uh, how do we estimate that? OK, so do that one. Uh, we need to understand, first of all, we take advantage of this leverage impact of the beta, as well as we're going to use the, the benchmark uh, approach. So for example, all right, um, we, I have example here. Suppose that we're going to use a benchmark. It's benchmark usually is the public company. Had a beta coefficient of 1.2. So we suppose we estimate and then we adjust. So the adjust the beta is 1.2. And then our goal here is that to, to use this benchmark to estimate a one company, all right, which had 90% correlation with that benchmark firm. Right, in terms of systematic risk, because we know that we're going to use CAPM model. CAPM model only focus on systematic risk. So let's suppose we have a company had a 90% correlation in terms of systematic risk with the benchmark firm. It's not an index. It's a benchmark company. Okay. The benchmark company had uh, adjusted beta of 1.2. How do we estimate that the non-public firm? if they have 0.9 or 90% uh, correlation to the beta. Can we just use 90% of the 1.2? The answer is no. You can't do that. Why? Because the beta coefficient here is very sensitive to the leverage or the financial leverage or the financial structure, which means the, the structure between debt and equity. In other words, we all know that high debt firm tend to have a higher risk. Compare everything holding constant. High debt company should have a higher risk. OK, so if you think about beta is risk index. It's a sensitivity to the systematic movement, right? So it's, a, it's an index. So suppose we have a company had, uh, the company had no debt. So we call, we call on-lever beta. The beta, uh, the beta of that on-lever firm, the firm had no debt. Now, compared to another company, exactly the same, the same type of company, but one had a debt, one without debt, their beta would be different. The beta for the lever firm, the true beta, every company had a leverage, right? Every company had debt. So the, 
the lever firm, the all, every company's beta will be higher than the hypothetical firm without debt. So the difference here is based on this debt ratio. So one plus the debt ratio. Now remember, this debt ratio is a positive number. One plus something times the hypothetical on lever beta, then the beta is higher than that. All right, so we know that the difference is based on the one plus the debt ratio. So if, if, we, if we see that one, then we know that for the public company, our benchmark firm, we need to find out first is that the, 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 the hypothetical on lever beta for that public firm. Well, how do we adjust? So we're going to adjust that is based on the beta we already estimate. For example, 1.2 here. So we use the 1.2 and divided by 1 plus that target uh, uh, benchmark firm's debt ratio. Now in this example, we assume that the debt to total asset uh, ratio for the benchmark firm is 40%. So in other words, 40% is the debt to the uh, total asset. So the equity is 60%. So the debt ratio here is 40% over 60%. That means two-third, two-third. So we able to estimate or calculate the unlevered beta of public firm, our benchmark firm, simply using the 1.2, the public company beta we estimate, divided by one plus two-third, all right, one plus two third, that is the uh, debt ratio here. All right, so once we have that, so we got the, we, we, that, therefore we're able to calculate the on-level uh, uh, on beta of the public company. Then the, the next step is what? Is to calculate the on lever, the on lever beta estimate of that individual company, which is non-public. So the non-public relationship to the, the public benchmark is based on their correlation. And this correlation is a systematic correlation. And in the example here show that the systematic risk uh, between uh, the public company and non-public company had a correlation of 0.9. Therefore, the uh, non-public companies hypothetical on lever beta is a 0.9 times the uh, the beta we asked we just calculate uh, the on lever beta of the public um, uh, for the public firm so it's a 0.9 times that 1.2 divided by 1 plus 2 third then finally then we adjust back All right step 5 is that we need to understand well the same structures occur um, in both firms, the non-public and public. So the on lever and the lever beta had the same relationship based on the debt ratio. Now, suppose the non-public firm debt ratio is 50%. So there's a 50% debt and a 50% equity. So the debt ratio here uh, debt to total, oh, sorry, this one I need to change that. The debt to total equity, the uh, debt to equity ratio, in here my example is 1, 2, 1, 2, that is not correct. Well, I make a correction here. So the, the non public company had the debt to total asset value of 50%, so the debt is uh, 50%, and the equity is also 50%. Uh, percent. So the debt to equity ratio is 1. Therefore, uh, the multiplier all right, is 1 plus debt ratio is exactly equal to 2. So with this calculation, we get the estimate beta for the non-public firm is 1.296. It's a, a, approximately equal to 1.3. 
So that is still quite different, right? If you're using, say, a lot of people are using 0.9 times 1.2, then it's much, much lower than the, the true estimate of 1.3 because there's a different depth to equity ratio. Or debt to equity or different leverage of financial uh, I'm sorry and the capital structures different so the beta coefficient is a very sensitive to the capital structure the debt ratio here so next time when you see the question on that please be careful uh, estimate the beta coefficient need to do this debt ratio adjustment